I had nothing basically. And then I went to my grandma, lent money for a trip to Australia to fulfill my dream and meet Frank Zant. And the third day I caught the world record. The world record? I caught the world record of Gunch. Three days with no knowledge. Don't ask me why it was pure luck. Really. Uh, yesterday was here Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> We would like to thank everybody who supports this podcast. Shit happens again. Shit happens again. Hi, Jakub. Hi, Tilo. <laughs> How are you? Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a few nice topics already, I think. Uh, really interesting. And uh, to be honest, for me as a person who never traveled over the Europe border, it's quite really impressed like to talk about things you know everything you're talking about is for me like like a script for a movie for example okay so um this is the reason because you make a lot of movies about all these adventures you have already done and also about the stuff you will do in the future so uh, maybe we can today focused a bit on the filming part of your life and your trips and of course in the last um episodes you was taking definitely a look into um a bit of the production or your your uh, partners that come with you like they pee in your face and stuff like this <laughs> and but yeah maybe you can just describe how it came to it that you film your adventures your fishing your travel how how why when i was a kid uh, when i was five years old i wanted to be a drummer okay when i was six years old i wanted to be a driver or a, a tractor okay nice and when i was um seven i wanted to be a fisherman and okay. Since that time, I want to be only fisherman. And you need to understand, I live in the communist and then post-communist country. We had nothing here. Fishing was something, you know, not very attractive uh, for medias, basically, that someone would have a, a fishing show about, uh, I mean, show about fishing on television. It was like impossible, I would say. Uh, when someone was a fisherman, they had these army clothing and they were hiding in the nature. They were not talking at all, you know. So people loved fishing, but it wasn't anything interesting for media or, or you know, like, like a sport. But that was my dream, you know, to live off of fishing. So uh, I was talking about it all the time and my parents were saying, no, you know, it's impossible. And everyone was saying it's impossible, you know, you you want to be a fisherman okay then you need to study um uh, uh fishing school but they will they will teach you how to lower the pond and take the fish from there or if you want to live off of fishing then you need to uh do uh, then you need to be a sales guy if in a fishing shop but that's it but i was always saying no no i i will make my money i will make my life uh, from real fishing, that I will be fishing, and everyone was, no, it's impossible. And since I was a small guy, I was following my big hero, Rex Hunt. Rex Hunt, many people forgot him, which for me is very sad. Uh, he was uh, Australian. Uh, back then, he was a superstar. He was, he had his own TV show on Discovery Channel mainly from fishing around Australia, but for many, many years he had a fishing show from Monday to Friday, like 30 minutes a day, then weekends off for many, many years. So great effort from his side. And actually he is the godfather of catch and release. He was the very first person who ever kissed a fish in front of the camera and released it. Yeah, Really? So all of people are doing catch and release because of him and many people don't even know that. 
So Regs Hunter. Including me. Yeah, including you. Remember that name very well. So for me, he was a superstar. And I was uh, studying uh, Academy of Music, Conservatory of Music in Prague, um, double bass and piano, because my father is a musician. And um, I loved music, but always I, I loved nature a bit more. And then I um, I changed the school and I got a new sh a new uh, teacher and the chemism between me and the teacher was suddenly gone, you know. And I said, okay, it's nothing for me anymore. Even I love music, I need to follow the voice of my heart. And then my uh, grandfather came and he said, you know, Jakub, the most important is that you have to be happy in your life. Nothing else matters, because if you will do something because you must do it, it's not going to bring you any happiness, even if you will have a good money. You, you have to do something, what will bring you the happiness first? And if you will be happy, you will be making people around you happy, and in the end, whatever you do, you will make money for your living. Maybe you won't become a millionaire, but you will be happy and that's the most important. So when I was like 18, I left school, third year of uh, conservatory of music. I came home uh, uh, between the doors, uh, said it to my father. He hit my face and said, okay, if you can make such a decision, you can make as well your own money. And I didn't see my family for next three years. Wow. So they kicked me out of uh, the house, home. I had nothing, basically. And then I went to my grandma, lent money for a trip to Australia to fulfill my dream and meet Rex Hunt. I went there. Uh, I end up in uh, Sydney with $50 in my pocket. Nothing more. I got sunburned first day really bad on the Bondi beach, <laughs> end up in the hospital. <laughs> and then I said, okay, I won't get lost. I, I will be able to make my money here in Australia, but I had no working visa. I didn't know that. No. And that back then it was really strict. So I was walking across the whole Sydney asking for the jobs. Impossible. Nothing. Nothing. I couldn't get the job. And uh, so I end up like homeless. I was living in Central Park in Sydney and eating rubbish from the bins. I was sleeping months and months in in the park, like homeless people. I met a lot of homeless friends, listen to their stories, fall down on my nose completely. I had white nails and white hairs and completely without vitamins. Uh, few times uh, in a week crying, but never broken. But really, I, I wanted to show my parents that I can fulfill my dream. And one day I was uh, in the most luxury uh, part of Sydney, uh, Bondi Junction, and there was a very beautiful sign on the restaurant with no name Limoncello. Italian restaurant, old Italian family. So I was really done, no food, nothing, you know, feeling all the, the stomach all the time, pain already. So I went inside and uh, the old Italian restaurant, uh, old Italian family just had a lunch before they were open, going to open the restaurant. So I went in introduced myself with very bad English and uh, nearly crying like in my voice. I was holding myself and I said, you know, I'm, I'm Jakub uh, from Czech Republic. Uh, I have no food, I have no work, I, I'm not scared of work. Please give me a work, I will do whatever. I don't need money, you just give me the food and I will work here. And I said it thousand times before in really shit restaurant like uh, bistros, Chinese bistros, like you would think uh, they give you work immediately, nothing. And this was like the most beautiful restaurant what I've seen in my life back then. 
and no one was looking at me. Suddenly the oldest guy, the, the head of the family, put his eyes up, look at me, didn't say anything. He was looking at me and he said, come today at five o'clock in the afternoon. Put his eyes down and continue eating his tortellini. So I said, thank you very much. I was there at five o'clock and I had the worst night of my life. Why? Uh, they gave me into the kitchen, like a kitchen hand. And uh, you need to uh, in, uh, quite to imagine a restaurant when with like 250, 300 people for a dinner every night with se uh, six, seven chefs plus stuff for them. And I was the only one cleaning their dishes. And if you know Italian uh, restaurants, they make one meal on three, four, five pens. <laughs> So in like first 30 minutes, it was me and like piles of stuff everywhere around me. And everyone was screaming at me, everyone screaming. After, after an hour, I had spinach here, tortellini here, spaghetti there. It was horrible. I mean, even I was trying to do my best. I mean, if 20 people want to make a nightmare out of your life and you are alone, you have no chance, you know. You clean one pen and you get 10. Yeah. You get two plates and you get 20. So it was really nightmare, really nightmare. You were you were eating Italian food even you didn't want to eat. <laughs> it was everywhere. And normally uh, they were finished with the restaurant and with the cleaning, with everything like 12.30, you know. So I was done with the dishes, uh, half past one o'clock in the morning, everyone all people were waiting for me, even the boss. All stuff from the kitchen, all uh, stuff from the restaurant, everyone, no one left. Everyone hated me. Everyone were looking at me with their eyes and it was like, you bastard, you know, I, I could be home and sleeping already. So I went like 1.30 in the morning, ready. Uh, like, I thought they would fire me immediately. And then the boss looked at me and said, now you will need to clear the floor and take all the chairs up to the tables. I was doing it next one and a half hour. Everyone was still waiting for me, even the boss. Everyone hated me. <laughs> so very late in the morning, I finished. I was walking without even like saying goodbye to everyone because I, I thought, there was no reason for it. This is like game over, no chance. And the boss was standing close to the doors. He did like, you did good. Here you have $50. But you will not spend these $50. I want that you you will put them uh, like a picture in a frame and you will keep them, these $50. And I was like, $50, you know, for me, it was like million. I said, I'm very sorry, but I don't have money to, to make it. So he gave me next $20. He said, I want to see it tomorrow. You will come and I want to see that you have these $50 in the frame for your memory. Next day I came, showed it to him. And uh, then I worked there, um, I think like nearly seven months, eight months. And I went from completely down, like the, the, the smallest shit <laughs> on the street, uh, until I got into the, to the kitchen where I was preparing and making pizzas with them. So really? step by step by step by step, they were showing me everything. They become my family as well. So that was my uh, first job in my life. Very hard job. Uh, since then, I love Italian people as well. And uh, between, I had no time for anything else, but... Uh, one day there was a fishing show, huge fishing show in Sydney with huge boats and big game fishing, all what I was dreaming in my life, you know, all these great people there. And I was like young guy, you know, with eyes like this. And, and there was the Rex Hunt and Steve Starling, big, big, big names from Discovery. You know, I was like, oh, they are alive, you know, <laughs> they really do exist. And there was like huge queue, like 400 people in front of me for 
hours and I was standing there, standing there, standing there, standing there. And when I got in front of him, uh, until now, I don't know what happened. Then everyone was waiting for the autograph, you know, maybe picture with few of them. It was like he wasn't even looking at the people, how how fast he needed to be. And I was suddenly standing in front of him and I said, uh, I am Jakob from Czech Republic and I would like to work for you. Really? Hell. <laughs> no. Yeah. And he looked at me like very strange. He made me the autograph, turned the paper, wrote me his number and said, call me tomorrow. And I called him tomorrow when we become great friends. He was as well many years later in Czech Republic and uh, we did a lot of stuff together, filming together. He become uh, kind of like a second father for me. And when I was leaving Australia after a year then, he told me, uh, Jakub, you can change your world, but it will be super tough. As well, you don't have ocean, but you must get fishing on TV. That's your only chance, only chance. If you can make fishing interested for other people, not only fishermen, you will, you will succeed. So I came back to Czech Republic full of this Elan, you know, different country, different culture, you know, nothing is impossible to this kind of gray world after the communism war, when nothing was possible and everyone was like hiding and stuff like this. And I called to Czech television, like full of energy, guys, I'm here, I'm 19 and I would like to have my fishing show. And it was like, okay, fishing, no, fish. <laughs> and I was calling every day, more than six months, same number, every day, more than six months. They hated me. They really hated me. <laughs> Sounds like. And after six months, I got my appointment. It was Mr. Medek, and he was the kind of, kind of CEO for programming. I went around his secretary. She hated me with her eyes. She, because the, she was the one who <laughs> I was, was I calling every day. And I even didn't say hello. And it was like, aha, uh -huh, it's you who is interrupting my secretary here every day. What do you want? And I said, yeah, I would like to make a fishing show. And he said, mm, fishing. Okay, uh, these are the people under the Charles Bridge, which sit there in the winter. Eight hours, they don't talk at all. They don't move at all. They don't catch anything. They got a flu and then they go home. I said, yes, <laughs> this is exactly it. This is exactly it, but it can be much bigger fun. Yeah. And um, yeah, six months later, I don't know why, but I got my first TV show on Czech Nation television. Was like this. Yeah, the fishing show was really bad, <laughs> really shit. <laughs> what, 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 what you was doing there, like fishing, in fishing Czech. in Czech Republic, yes, fishing in Czech Republic. And it was really poor. If I see the show now, after many many years, I would like to stick my head into the sand, <laughs> you know. But it was uh, uh, the beginning, more than twenty years ago. And that was uh, that was the beginning. And I did more shows and more shows and more shows, learning how to work uh, editing. When we started, we were filming with huge cameras, you know, digital Betacam. No one could ever imagine that today you can film with iPhone better, you know, than with these cameras. We were editing with analogs, still not digital. We were spending for 10 minutes of editing, two days in the editing studio, you know, with, uh, with tapes still, you know, was like with the scissors, <laughs> kind of with scissors. <laughs> yes. It was, it was crazy, you know, playing and looking the screen and going backwards and forwards. I have learned a lot from great people and, uh, learning, 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 learning. And then my dream was, uh, that maybe one day. I will be able to film something big, something for but bigger TV stations. One one question: Do you was it was it was it able for you to live out of 
making these TV shows just right from the beginning or was it like no or like a pilot project no it was like a pilot project uh, I, w I wasn't taking yeah for me money were not important yeah, but was, you needed to to live yeah but it was passion I, I I knew how to live without money like homeless people in Australia I I I, I I said to myself, I knew how it is to live out of nothing. And now I am fulfilling my dream. I never forgot the words of my grandfather, you know. So, and I knew if I will do it with my heart and with my passion that the money one day will come. So I I had to, so I was like uh, making extra money that I, uh, I was getting uh, like these, uh, uh, pay, paper advertisements yeah. which you give to every post uh, um, every house you know into the the leather box yeah, yeah the leather box and that's how I was making as well extra money and I was uh, picking up uh, strawberries in the summer and and uh, doing doing work like this crazy and meanwhile doing my uh, fishing show but but I I was interrupting you at one point that you was talking about your dream one time you had a dream on this time you want to make one time a big show, yeah yeah um, because um, I had always dream uh, I was huge fan of uh, National Geographic magazine because in in when I was young it was kind of the secret to to have it you know it was magazine from United States mm. so so. It was even a little, little bit dangerous to have these things back then. So uh, when I got the National Geographic magazine, it was like holy grail for me. You know, every page was like, oh, what will be next? You know, it was like super special. You know, it was like a Bible. Every uh, every issue was like a Bible. So I said, maybe one day, if I would be able to write one article for you know national geographic that that would be awesome and i did after i i wrote article about uh, some big uh, freshwater fish for national geographic and uh i was as well sending a lot of materials a lot of pictures to national geographic channel later never got a reply <laughs> sending more and more and more never give up Never gave up. But then everyone was telling me, you know, you're a small guy from small country. You know, you have hundreds of millions of people living there. Do you think that Jakub, some Jakub from Czech Republic, banana country, we lived here on the trees a few years ago that you could be interested. Uh, you could be interesting for them. And I was saying, uh, you know, I have bad cameras. I have bad bad equipment but I have some ideas and and that was already the time when I was traveling the world you know so I always said okay I don't have so much money I can buy these super good cameras and microphones and anything like this but I have the time so I will spend more time than the others so I will witness and film better things than them and I, I will be always sending it to them no reply Never. And one day they called me. They called me from National Geographic. And uh, they sent a plane for me. I end up in San Francisco. Huge office. <laughs> like, oof, dream, different world. Small guy, you know, shift closing, <laughs> young, no experiences, bad English. And, uh, the office super beautiful, you know, and a lot of guys in you know, perfect suit and you know ready to meet the boss. And I was sitting there like the last shit on the road again, <laughs> and suddenly huge guy came with his shorts and really old shirt, and he said, "Jakub, come in." And I saw that it's coffee guy, no, no, it was the boss. It was the boss. He skipped all these beautiful dressed guys and he called me and uh, he said, sit down. What do you want? I said, uh, I don't know what you are asking me, you know. No, what do you want? I said, what do you mean? Uh, you call me. 
I know I, we called you, but what do you want? What's, what's your dream? Now I said, uh, my dream would be to have, you know, to do something for, for National Geographic. And he said, hmm, okay, so here's the deal. Uh, did you ever heard about uh, giant devil catfish? I said, no. It's gunch. They, they call it gunch. It lives in India. Uh, I will send you to India with my very good crew. Uh, you have three days. You need to catch this fish. You need to film this fish. Come back with the material. And if you will do this, I will do this. I will give you your own TV series on National Geographic. I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, okay, <laughs> that's an offer. Never been in India before. Didn't know how the fish looks like, <laughs> where to go, how to catch it, what kind of bait. If we are in good season, didn't know anything, <laughs> anything. So went to India with. Uh, how so much time was between he? Uh, the I offer think two weeks. Okay, two that's quite weeks. fast. Yeah. Uh, so I went to India with this crew. I met their really cool guy Vinay. We are friends, live friends. He was with me as well. Uh, he helped me a lot. Uh, first day, I uh, at, back then already it was super rare fish, yeah. and uh, Thursday I caught uh, first gunch, already <laughs> completely uh, lucky. And the third day I caught the world record. The world record. I caught the world record of gunch three days with no knowledge. Don't ask me why <laughs> it was pure luck, really. No Let's knowledge. Your name on the bullshit fish. knowledge. Nothing, nothing. No knowledge. Nothing, you know, really the most shit fisherman in India was me back then. World record, third day, 75 kilos. Amazing fish, amazing fish. Came back and uh, got my uh, TV show on, this, uh, on National Geographic called Fish Warrior. So then I traveled the world for some time with them and it was beautiful, really cool. This is, this is like an insane live life story. Like if I think if, of course, like young people hear this story will, and maybe there are people because, you know, like the world is changing so much more into this digital online world. So I think there are a lot of people out there where thinking about, okay, how I can maybe live out of fishing and maybe think about TV or something else. There, there are a few options, but. I mean, like you have a really hard way to get there where you get now or get these shows. So what you would tell the people who have a similar dream than you? Never give up. Never give up. Uh, when you never do m stuff only for money because it's shortcut. I've tried shortcuts many times in my life, never worked out. If you want to have something special, you need to suffer. You need to put everything of yourself inside of it. You need to sweat, you need to bleed. And if you put everything into it, your dream will come true. Doesn't matter what it is. If you want to be the best chef in the world, or if you want to be a great soccer player or a great rugby player, or if you want to fly into universe, it really doesn't matter but you need to put everything inside. But I, and I mean everything. And you need to be ready as well that you will look strange into, in the eyes of other people. Because become that guy means giving more energy, be strange, and to reach there, people won't understand you. Because when you are young and you are doing this, you are obsessed. And people think you are completely crazy why, why you are doing this. And you want to have more and more and they say it's enough, but it's not enough because you want to get more to get there, you know, to reach the goal because there is the goal in your head and people don't understand why. So it, there are a lot of people which think you are a freak, but they will stay here. But if you want to go there, it's a super long and very hard way with minimum friends, definitely. But the most important is trusting in yourself, doing the maximum, don't do stupid shortcuts and be lucky enough 
of meeting really good people, which can help you and never think that you are the smartest, you know, because I was in one moment, I was super unlucky with people. They pulled me down and on the other side, I have to say few times I was super lucky with people which trusted in myself and helped me in the end, uh, two of them, my mother and my father. After they saw what I'm doing in the fishing, they started support, supporting me and they become again my uh, best friends mm -hmm. in my life. So, but passion, everything is about passion. Like crazy passion when you just want to do it. Like that's, that's something what you must do. No, without that, you have no, no chance to get on the top and as well stay there. To get on the top, it's, it's, uh, I don't want to say it's easy, but very difficult is to stay there for some time. So, passion. It's all about passion. Yeah. To be honest, I, I, I it's completely round what you're telling me. It's like the perfect end, <laughs> to be honest, to, to, to this kind of thing. So just to to make it completely like what is the plan for your future so i think you're not in the end right now you never know when is the end in no, your it's... mind you're not in the end uh i hope so i have a lot of other plans uh there are a lot of other things what i would like to discover you know i've seen a lot in in my eyes but i'm still hungry i'm still hungry for more because I know the, the world which I love is vanishing, it's disappearing, you know, all these beautiful tribes and differences and strange languages and strange smells and tastes and crazy looking fish and colors in the nature. We are taking it everything uh, away and I want to see as much as possible in, in, in my lifetime and one day when I will be old I will be able to to tell stories to my grandchild, hopefully, about things which won't probably exist anymore. And uh, that's my plan. I want to see as much as possible. Okay, so what happens after the National Geographic? Because this wasn't the end. Like No, it was actually the beginning. <laughs> it was, it was uh, I had a great time to say I was uh, living my dream. And uh, I remember uh, I was standing in the Fraser River fishing for white sturgeon. <laughs> and uh, I was holding their beautiful white sturgeon, beautiful specimen and another dream in your hands. And suddenly the producer came like crazy and uh, start screaming, Jakub, Jakub, great news for you and whole team. It's, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Uh, you will be uh, on the tonight show of John Lennon. What? And I was like, okay, holding the fish. No, okay. Something new. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, and they, they were like, you are not happy. It's, it's the biggest show on on America and my reaction was really funny because I said uh, so what was the name John Lennon but how can I be on the show of John Lennon John Lennon is already dead <laughs> that was my reaction you know and they said no it's not John Lennon it's Jay Leno and it, it took me a few seconds because I, I wasn't following, you know, the American shows. And then they described him and then I got serious because I knew, I knew it's big. I knew it's big. Then I, aha, uh -huh, uh -huh, okay, that's the guy. Okay, the presidents were there. All the super pop stars <laughs> were there. Okay, you mean that the guy with the red sofa on television with like million, uh, million, viewers every episode yeah Jakub that's the show I was like fuck <laughs> now I'm screwed <laughs> so so it, it was really huge I had like limousine you know red carpets all, all these things like five star hotel I, I lived like a like pop star you know 
that time. And uh, they send they send me to the studio. Only the studio. It's like Hollywood movie, you know, with so many artists and there were animals and all all these hundreds and hundreds of people for that one guy. So I was in uh, my clock room inside and suddenly came guy, you know, with white hairs, but again with quite cheap trousers, old sh- shirt with uh, something to drink and big plate of fridge. And uh, he gave it to me and said, hey, I'm Jay Leno. He had hundreds of people around him who could bring it to me. No, he did it himself. We had a great talk about uh, Czech cars because he's great collectors of cars. Uh, we were talking about Czech beer and Czech women, of course. <laughs> it was a great story. But then I got kind of really panicked because they told me, uh, yeah, um, uh, yesterday was here Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, uh, tomorrow after you, there will be, and I don't know who it was, uh, like super big singer, like like Shakira or someone like this, like super crazy. You know? okay. So, okay, okay. Uh, these two and me. <laughs> 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 so got really panicked. And you know that this show is followed by millions. So if you do something bad, you're basically done yeah. in the industry. So then the, the red lights went on. He said, Jakub, go. And I, I went on the stage and it was great. You know, it was great. He was super nice. We had, uh, we had amazing talk. I was the first Czech guy ever on, on the, on the tonight show of Jay Leno. Next days, all Czech medias were calling me, even the medias, which never called me before, <laughs> you know, it was like huge. And, uh, yeah, that, that was it. And then, uh, it, uh, the fish warrior got on TV. It was broadcasted around the whole world. And, uh, then I was still hungry, you know, I wanted to more and explore more and um, I said, okay, National Geographic, I fulfilled my dream. So what next? Maybe I could do BBC or Discovery, it would be amazing. And I was like wishing it in my head that something like this could happen. And uh, then I decided to take a step back kind of and uh, do a huge fi- a huge uh, fishing show for Czech television. The the CEO of Czech television called me and he said, Jakub, uh, you did amazing job for National Geographic, but we were the ones who created you in Czech television. I remind him as well how difficult it was yeah. on body. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, yeah, but you know, we would be super happy if uh, you would do now something like this, something very special for us. But that time I, I knew Czech television, it wasn't easy because you had a lot of people which needs to make decisions and uh, and uh, basically you're, you you come with the idea and 20 other guys uh, can, screw it, can screw it up, you know. So I said, okay, if you give me completely freedom, you give me the budget, I will do it and I will give you the series like this and you can air it. I don't want to have anyone else who will be ta- talking with me and telling me how to do it. I will do it with my own crew, with my guys, with my team, and we will deliver the ready show. And we did. So we did. Uh, 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 that uh, that show was called uh, Fish Legends of Jakub Wagner. Okay. That was the first series, big series on, on TV. That was the traveling series we did. Fishing in the Amazon, fishing in Africa, fishing in many other strange places around the world. It, it, it had great success. And now listen to this. Uh, there, there you have the Cannes Festival, you know, with, uh, with uh, different TV productions. Yeah. They, they meet there and they have that movie and film festival. <clears throat> and uh, a lady from Czech television took a pile of uh, DVDs, uh, what Czech television did, went there, had a lot of meetings there, put these DVDs on the table. Another woman from Discovery Channel took that pile of DVDs 
pick few of them, put it on her pile. So the pile was really big. And a few days later, she went to the uh, CEO of programming of uh, Discover. And she forgot that pile on the table of that guy. That guy took one of the DVD, put it into the player and said, I want to have this guy. And it was me. Great. That's so crazy. That's how I got on Discovery Channel. So it was a fault. Yes. To be honest, it was yes. a fault. It was a fault. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Crazy. This is and then you was the first guy who ever shoot both, right? Yes, for Net Geo and Discovery Channel. So nothing is impossible. Yeah, exactly. Nothing is impossible. Just follow your uh, dreams and work hard for it and uh, never give up. That's the basic rule of your life. Whatever you want to be, just do more, harder, and try to do better. No shortcuts. And sweat and bleed and you will get there. Just follow your dream. That's an awesome end, to be honest, these sentences, I think, to make a wrap on this episode. Or is there something else you want to add on it, to say on it? We will continue next time. We will continue. All right. <laughs> shit happens. Shit happens. <laughs> Sometimes good shit happens. <laughs> yeah, it is true. Before I think you'll stop.